Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Hi, welcome to today's lesson. What I'd like to do is pause the video, try this question here. Can you calculate angles A, B and C? And even better, can you give reasons to your answers as you do it? Okay, here goes. Well, there's a few ways you can do this. Um, I'm going to jump straight to finding A. Now, I know I've got parallel lines here, and so these two angles actually add up to 180. So it must be that A is equal to 80. And we say that the reason is that they are co-interior. So 100 and A are co-interior. They add to 180. If I've got that, then I can easily work out B because this is on a straight line. So B is going to equal 100. So I could just say angles on a straight line for that one. I'm just going to write straight line. Now, you may have not done it this way. Another way you could have done it is you could have realized that 100 and B are actually alternate angles because I sort of have a, it's not quite a Z in this sort of way. But it's, it's, um, it's kind of like that, you know, you can see the Z there, but actually when you do this thing, these two are alternate. So that would be more reasoning. You could get that B is 100 through alternate angles, and then A is 80 on a straight line. And finally, if we want C, well, actually, that's not really, um, not really related to A and B. I mean, we could use it. We could use the fact that B and this angle are co-interior. So if B is 100, that this one must be 80. This, this little bit here is 80. Um, you could also use the fact that probably more obviously that this is on a straight line. And then this whole thing in green is on a straight line, on a straight line itself. So that's going to be 180. So if we add those two together, then we're going to get 260. So just bringing back in angles on parallel lines to start this lesson. Right, today we're going to look at um, a topic and it's related to angles, hence the, the starter. Um, and here's a situation, a scenario as such. So a speedboat over here and a fishing boat, and they're both measured to be 50 degrees from the lighthouse. But can you explain why they're not in the same location? Well, you might think this is a bit of a strange question. I mean, one's over here and one's over here, but let's look at the north. Well, we should try and remember that it's north, east, south, west. There's lots of different ways of remembering it. Um, never eat shredded wheat is one way I remembered it. Or Nelly the elephant squirts water. These are some things I, I remember uh, learning it. But yeah, find a way of learning it. But this fishing boat's over to the east and the speedboat's over to the west. So they're clearly not in the same location. Uh, we can We can see that. But we might describe to somebody that maybe they're 50 degrees from the north. So how can we maybe distinguish that? How could we use angles to distinguish between the two different locations of the boats? So I want you to pause the video, think about this. All right, there's a little sneaky bit of the title in here actually. So today's topic is bearings and this is how we distinguish between it. We actually look at, we go from the north line, we've done that for both of these, but our definition of a bearing is that we go clockwise round. And so you can see if I define my bearing, right, if I go clockwise, okay, I'm going to go 50 degrees for the fishing boat, but for the speed boat, because I'm going clockwise, I'm going to have to go even further. And hence we can, we can distinguish between um, the fishing boat and the speed boat using an angle. And I've said that then, I've said clockwise from the north. And the other thing is that we give the bearing as three figures. So I'll talk more about that in a minute. But for example, if I had a north line here and I had an airplane, okay, I start from my north line, I go clockwise until I get to the line at which the airplane's on, I would measure 63 degrees. My bearing is then 063 degrees. A ship over here, meanwhile, okay, I don't want to, I'm not going anti-clockwise, I have to go all the way around, and it's going to be 297 degrees, so that would be bearing. So now I've said that, can you figure out 
what bearing the fishing boat is on from the lighthouse. I'm starting at the lighthouse. What's the bearing for the fishing boat? And what's the bearing for the speed boats? Pause the video, give this a go. Right, well, the fishing boat is we start at north, we turn 90 degrees, we've gone 50 degrees. The bearing is 0, 050. Zero. Don't forget about that zero. Um, I think it's to do, like, why, is, why do we use three figures? I could be wrong. I think it's to do with the fact that, you know, this was used in shipping for, for a long, long time. I don't actually know if it still is. But if you're talking maybe over um, some sort of communication or if you're somehow communicating, if you say 50, like you, you might have just misheard the 150. But if you say 0, 050 or 0, 050, they know they've heard the three digits. They're not going to have missed anything. Like you're going to be correct because you don't want to be going um, on a bearing of 50 degrees if it should have been 150. So I think it's to do with the communication aspects. Try and remember these things. The north line, get that drawn in. If it's not drawn in, we go clockwise and we have three figures. So how about the speedboat? What bearing is the speedboat on from the lighthouse? Give this a go if you haven't already. All right, in this case, we start from north, we go all the way around. All right, well, the, probably the easiest thing to do is realize that if I went all the way around to north, it would be 360. So it's 360, and then I'm going to minus this little bit. And the answer is going to be 310 degrees. And so if you've understood that, you're in a great place because that is essentially you know, what we're looking at today, being able to um, measure bearings, like draw bearing lines in, and we're going to be calculating some bearings. So I'm just going to test you uh, a couple of diagnostic questions. On what bearing is southwest? Right, hopefully you've paused the video, given this a go. Um, we start from north. This is going to be southwest, so I want to go all the way around here. Well, if I go halfway around, it's going to be 180 north to south because it's on a straight line. And then I'm going to add in this little bit here, which is going to be 45. So it's going to be 225 or B. You could potentially have done, I don't know, maybe you recognize this is 270 because it's like 90, 90, 90, and then you could subtract 45. That would be another way of doing it, I suppose. Lots of different ways, but it's 225. How about this one? Have a read of it and then try it out. So this is where it's really helpful to kind of get a feel for what's going on with these angles. We know that 180 is directly south, actually. We're going all the way south. So 120 degrees is going to be not quite. We're not quite going that far. So it's maybe going to be, so if I'm at um, point X, it's going to be kind of down this way. So I can rule out A. Um, I can even rule out C. Actually, it kind of leaves me with B or D. I'm kind of sensing that it might be D. Let's have a look at the Y1. That's 195. So that's actually going to go beyond 180. It's going to be going to the left. So I can rule out B as well. Yeah, this seems about right. That looks like it's um, this angle here that I'm drawing. Looks like it's 120, pretty much. And then Y, let me draw this one in. Bearings going down. That looks about 195, so D is the one that would make sense. We've talked about the compass idea. I want you to add bearings to this compass. So obviously, if you wanted to go east, you might just say go east. But let's think about if it was east, northeast, and so on. Can you fill in the bearings for this compass just to, to further improve your understanding? Pause the video, try this out. Right, main thing. Well, here we go. I'll just show you the answers. So actually, I think the key ones, 90, 180, 270, get them in. Then you realize you're just going 45 and so on. Actually, I didn't fill in the other ones, but I'd be, I'd be going up by 22.5 every time. So you can figure out if that's correct. And note, north is 0 or 360. You'd, you'd probably never say a bearing of 360. You would just go straight to 0. So I'm going to cross that one out. Okay, brilliant so far, keep going. 
Let's take another uh, look at another example. So um, what I'd like to do is, well, hopefully you've got a handout for this, you print it off and you can give it a go. If not, you're just going to have to estimate it. Can you try these three questions? I've just noticed this should be question C here. Pause the video and then I'll go through it. So measure the bearing of B from A. That means that A is the start and B is the finish. But it's not always the second thing that's the start. We could say measure the bearing from A to B. So you've just got to be able to carefully look at the question, realize where you're starting and where you're ending. So we're going to start at A. We've got a north line in there. We know that we get a protractor. We line it up with north, so that's on zero. And then I'm going to read around clockwise. So it's going to go 10, 20, 30, and so on to 60. And that's going to be, you might get 59 or 61, maybe. I, I read it as, as pretty much 60. And so my bearing is actually going to be 0, 6, 0. Don't forget the three digits. I've done what I've set up here. Uh, I've measured clockwise from the north line, and I've given it as three figures. Measure the bearing of A from B. That means that now B is the start and A is the finish. If you've got a protractor that's a full circle, this, this is a bit easier than if you don't. You can again line it up with north and read around clockwise and it's going to, I'm going beyond 180 degrees and I think it's going to be, I'm just going to line up a little bit better, I think it's going to be 240 or thereabouts, maybe 239, 241. 240, I'm going with there. If you don't have a protractor like this, then you're going to have to realize that I've got 180. And then you start from zero again, read around, I get 60. So it's going to be 180 plus 60, which is 240. You can do it with half a protractor. Let's go back to the full protractor. So that's measuring bearings, two different bearings. Be careful with the language. Make sure you know where you're starting and where you're ending. Do a little estimate as you go. We can see that this is an acute angle. We can see this is a reflex angle. So you expect it to be, you know, if, if you did make a mistake and read off your compass incorrectly, you'd know, okay, it, it should be more than 180 degrees, this one. Another mast C is on a bearing of 160 degrees from B on the map. C is four centimeters from B. So we're now given a distance as well. Okay, and obviously you could be asked to measure distances and convert them into kilometers and so forth. I'm not doing that here, we'll do it. We're uh, actually measuring a bearing. So it's from B, that's going to be my starting point. Uh, and now I'm reading around 160 degrees. So it's going to be here. The only thing then to do is uh, draw a line to go from it. But what I really should do is measure four centimeters first and then do it. So yours might not look exactly the same as my, uh, mine because I've kind of randomly picked four centimeters here. It might not quite be to scale. So this is about 4.2. So here we go. Four centimeters on that bearing. Yeah, that's pretty good. I've, I would leave that in just so they can, you know, they can see that. That's for my protractor. I've gone along to it, but I don't go to that point because that wasn't four centimeters. I've stopped at four centimeters. Yours should look similar. And then uh, it's asked me to mark the position of C. So I'm just going to put a little cross. And a capital C, and we're done. Let's keep going. How about this question here? A ship is lost at sea. Two nearby lighthouses have bearings of where the ship is. From A, it's 117 degrees, while from B, it's 275. Can you work out the location of the ship and help them get to safety? Pause the video, give this a go. In this case, we don't have any information on uh, the, like how far away they are from the lighthouse, but we've got two bearings. So let's see if that is enough information. OK, 
get my comp my uh, protractor on A and I'm going to measure around 117 degrees. So I start at zero, but I'm measuring around the outside. 117 degrees is going to be here. Now I don't know how far away it is, but I know it's along this line. So all I'm going to do is go from A and draw it from here. Actually, I'm going to keep going. Everywhere along this line is actually 170 degrees, 17 degrees from A. Done. And then 275 from B. Line it up with B. Perfect. Okay, going to do it in blue this time. Again, zero. Read around 275 is here. From B, everywhere along this whole line is 275. So it's got to be both on the, this bearing from A and from this bearing from B. So where is the location of the ship? It's going to be here. And we can help rescue it now. Brilliant. So different situations for bearings. Hopefully it's making sense. Can you draw bearings? Can you measure bearings? One more thing to look at. Here it goes. So sometimes you'll get asked to measure a bearing. Sometimes you'll get asked, it's kind of implied actually, to draw a bearing. Different here. It says the diagram is not drawn accurately, so we cannot measure bearings off of it. Instead, we've got some numbers and we're being asked to work out or calculate the bearing of B from P, P from A. Right, let's try and figure out what it means, B from P. That means we start at P here, and I want to go to B. So I want to go all the way around here. Now this, that's, you know, we don't actually know this angle, but that is absolutely fine because the missing angle, the, or the, well, the whole way around, remember, is 360 degrees. So it's going to be 360 minus this bit here, minus 138. I think that's, you can use a calculator if you want, that's going to be 222 degrees. We're then asked to work out the bearing of P from A. P from A means we start at A. Now this time they've not, they've not got the north line, but we can put it in. Nothing stopping us doing that. Just make sure it's parallel to A. Okay, and if you haven't given this, hopefully you did try this before I started going for it, but if you haven't tried this yet, pause the video, go for it. You can put another north line in. P from A means this angle here. How do we get that? It's all the way up there. It's not, you know, it's not going to be the same as P. Well, here's how. I've drawn that north line in, and actually, I've got parallel lines here. This is finally kind of what I was getting at at the very start of the question. So, in fact, I can work out this angle here because these two are co-interior angles. They add up to 180. So the blue one is 180 minus 64, which is going to be 116 degrees. And then the red one, part this is part B, it's going to be 360 degrees minus that. 240 or degrees. Cool. So be careful. You have to realize that there are, when you are working out bearings, often there are parallel lines going on in there. You won't be told that, so you'll be expected to recognize it. Another way you could have done this question, if, you, if you're not completely happy with co interior lines, is you, you'd have to realize to extend this and then actually use the fact that this is corresponding. This 60, this purple angle. And this uh, this green angle here, the corresponding angles. 
So we get 64 here, and then we can add on 180 uh, here, and that would also give you 244. So there's more than one way, and that's kind of why I wanted to talk at the start, uh, in the start about different ways of doing it. We didn't use uh, corresponding angles at the start, but you know, you got all those facts to utilize. All right, hopefully this is you right now. Keep practicing your bearings. Um, try the task I'm going to set and you will, you know, it's well worth doing. Lots of different questions you can get and it comes up in other areas that I've not yet covered, such as uh, non-right angle trigonometry. You'll get bearings creeping in there potentially. So make sure you are familiar with them and then you can apply them to lots of situations. Brilliant.